You're Good morning, everyone. Steve Field from the Prime Safety Department. It's April 30th, 8 o'clock in the morning. And like we do each week, we're coming to you from the basement of the Z building. And I say this every week, this is not permanent. I've got a little bit of information on some uh, uh, updates on activities that we're having, we're not having. I'll talk about those for a minute. We've got Jason Seymour with us today also to update us on COVID. I know that's on everyone's mind. We haven't had Jason in a while, so it's gonna give us the opportunity to hear from Jason and also for you to ask questions. Also this week, uh, we have Tyler Patrick. We had Tyler last week, had a lot of good questions, but we, we wanted Tyler to come back and talk about Road Check, which is coming up. We've also got Brianne to talk about the app, another person we haven't had in a while. There's always a lot of questions on the app. We've got Sean and Angie from Payroll, good information coming from there. So for all those areas, get your questions ready. We're, we're trying something a little different to make it a little smoother for us to get the questions. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to see them uh, up on the big screen. If not, uh, uh, Ms. Mueller will read them to us and we will get them. Just a couple of things on the safety side first. You know, I wanna thank you for another good week. Uh, you know, I've talked about this year that we struggled in January. We can't go back and redo that. But since January, you've really been doing well out there. And we appreciate that. Uh, the cost of accidents right now is just unbelievable, particularly where there's injuries. There's the moral responsibility we have where we don't want to hurt anyone. And then just the tremendous cost. Uh, we're very fortunate that 2020 was a good year for us. And I anticipate 2021 will also be a good year. So thank you for all your, your work last week and keeping those accidents down. Uh, I know it's not easy out there. I know how challenging it is out there with the construction, the congestion, the four wheelers. But at the end of the day, you just do a fantastic job. So let's keep that up and let's make it a good, strong weekend for us. Let me get a little bit of bad news. It's not really bad, but I do want to be transparent on it. <clears throat> we had talked about having a million mile dinner this May. Uh, it was going to be the one million safe mile dinner. That's a huge event. Uh, we usually get about 600, 650 people at it. We're just not comfortable bringing that many people in, drivers, in-house associates, guests, to be sitting there stationary for two, two and a half hours. We're just going to have to hold off on that. So we're not going to have that uh, dinner in May. Our next opportunity is in June when we have the two, three, and four uh, million mile dinner scheduled. We're going to see what we can do on that one. That one is a little bit smaller. As we get there, we'll have more confidence and whether the vaccine's working, the herd immunity, and just where we stand on COVID. So we have not made a decision on that. Got an email yesterday about, have we decided about the picnic, the pride and polish and the truck driving championship? No, we haven't. Uh, good thing is, of course, the truck driving championship and the pride and polish are outside. That gives us a good opportunity to have those this year. We really want to do it, get back into that. That's not until late August or September. So I'm fairly confident that we might be able to pull that off this year. And then we'll just see about the picnic. Uh, we may have to adjust it some. I'm just kind of speaking off the cuff a little bit. You know, we get in that bingo room, kind of in the big, uh, the, the biggest area of the oasis right there. I, I don't know. We'll just have to see in September. But I think Pride and Polish and the Truck Driving Championship are looking pretty good. So we've got uh, Road Check coming up, uh, Road Check 2021. They're going to key in on two areas, but of course they can look at anything they want. They're going to look at lighting and they're going to look at hours of service. While I'm standing up here, before I bring Tyler up, I'll just talk just for a couple of seconds on hours of service. We had Susan a couple of weeks ago. She went over a lot of information that hasn't changed. But she and I came up with five things that you can do to make sure you're ready if you get inspected during the road check. At number one is make sure you know how to transfer your logs. The officers expect that you have that knowledge on how to do that. If you don't get with your log advisor, it's very simple once you learn how to do it. So you have to know how to do that. You have to know where the instruction manual is. It's not a paper copy that you carry. It's embedded within the OmniTracks. So you've got to know how to get to that. Again, if you don't know, get with your advisor and they'll go over with you how to do that. You have to have that spare log book. That should just be a gimme. When the officer says, show me your paper log book, just pull it out of wherever you have it. It 
uh, most people keep it in the left door, but it can be anywhere. But just make sure you have that. Make sure you know how to certify your logs. That's becoming uh, a more common violation that we're seeing. You have to go in every day, certify it. That's your electronic signature that that information is accurate. And finally, and sometimes this trips us up, make sure during that inspection, you're on duty. We do see inspections where the driver has done fantastic. There's no violations listed. Then at the end of the inspection, the officer says, let me look and see what duty status you were on during this inspection. And it's off. And if it's off duty, he'll probably write that is a violation. I don't think he'll give you a ticket, but it is a violation that prevents you from getting the, uh, the bonus for a clean inspection. And it goes on your uh, CSA record. So those five things, I think if you get those mastered, you'll be pretty good at a roadside inspection for the, your equipment. I'm gonna ask Tyler Patrick to come up. We're focused on lighting, but you've gotta be ready for anything. So come on up, Tyler. Hey, thanks, Steve. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tyler Patrick from the Road Assist Department. Thank you so much for having me back again this week. Um, last week, we touched on a few topics such as pre-trips and went through some stuff like that. And that's gonna carry in nicely to this week. So. Up and coming, like Steve just mentioned, we've got the CVSA Road Check 2021. That's coming up next Tuesday, May the 4th. It's going to go through May the 6th. As Steve stated, the focus this year is going to be on hours of service and lighting. So we need to make sure that we're going through doing a good pre-trip on the equipment, the truck and trailer, making sure that all the lights are working. They're good to go throughout the day. A lot of the new trucks have features. You can just push a button. Everything starts flashing off. They give you a good uh, walk around time to make sure that all your lights are working. During that CVSA inspection, we want to make sure, like Steve said, we have our logs and everything figured out. So whenever those um, inspections come about, we've got everything ready. Um, over the last three years, one of our main issues of out of services during the road check has been tires. Um, it's actually been our number two out of service. So real quick, I want to talk about some tires. I've actually brought a little display up today. So if you guys have any questions in regarding your tires, by all means, please, now is the time to get those pictures over to your maintenance advisor. Let them know what curious or what you know items you want to look at and make sure that they're okay with you. By all means, we're going to help you look at those and make sure that we're making a safe and um, cost efficient decision for your tires. So, so real quick, one of the major things on uh, measuring tires and being compliant is that your major tread grooves on your steer tires have at least four thirty seconds of tread life. You can measure that with a tread depth gauge. These right here are going to be your major tread grooves through the middle of the tire. On your steer tire, this outer groove is known as the decoupling groove. Okay, that's not a measurable tread groove. However, a lot of shops over the road are going to try and sell you on that if this groove is gone. That's not a measurable tread groove. Like I said, DOT is not going to put you out of service for it. They're not even going to write you a violation for it. One thing I like to show on this cutaway during some of our pro maintenance classes and stuff like this is you can see how much rubber is actually in this side of the tire over underneath that decoupling groove before you get to the cords. Over here, whenever you get down to that 430 seconds, you're a lot closer to the steel. So even if we have you uh, drivers call in saying, well, I just don't feel comfortable running this tire, um, by all means, you're the captain of the ship. But I like this, this display to show you just how much rubber you've still got in the shoulder of that tire under that decoupling groove. So it's really not a safety concern. Um, and I think this is a great way to show you that. So anyways, like I said, steer tires are going to be 430 seconds of tread groove. Drive and trailer tires are only going to be 230 seconds of tread groove. So anything that and above is legal to roll down the road. Um, another thing we want to talk about is uh, we had a question come in this week about um, with summer coming up and, and tire fires, um, which is a big topic. Those are very, very dangerous. It's a hazard to everybody. So first and for foremost, if you're ever encountered in a, in a fire on the trailer, if we can get the truck disconnected, by all means, let's get the truck disconnected. Let's get you, yourself, your pets away from that trailer that's on fire. And then we can come back and address the fire situation. Um, call 911. Let your dispatcher and you know your fleet manager, your road assist know so we can go ahead and get on top of that. One thing that causes these is, is tire fires um, are typically involved by heat, and that's due to running them low. Now, the tire itself is not going to catch on fire, but when the cords and everything gets wrapped up, that's typically where we see this really, really excessive heat start to build. So... Like we mentioned earlier and last week, that pre-trip is going to be your number one way to prevent these from happening. And also, whenever you stop for the day, just because, you know, you're taking your 30 minute break, let's take a, you know five minutes, walk around the truck real quick, walk around the trailer, make sure everything's still good to continue rolling down the road. Um, really don't have much else for today. Last year, we had about 13 fires um, or thermal events that, that may have been related to um, tires or what, what may have you. But um, nonetheless that's all preventable so we can make sure that we get those um, pre-trip inspections done to make sure we're not having tire issues. We have some questions? Yeah, 
No. For ten dollars, <laughs> loves <laughs> gives oh. you paperwork to show you level of threads, PSI levels. Can our terminals provide such so we can keep track monthly? So at our Springfield and Salt Lake, I believe we have the new scan system. So whenever you drive over that tire reader, it's going to send that information to your Qualcomm. Um, by all means, the inspectors are checking these tire tread depths and pressures as you're coming to the terminals anyway. So if you want to, whenever you're coming through inbound, by all means, ask that inspector, hey, what are my tread depths like? What are my pressures at? Am I good there? Um, we have the Doran tire pressure monitoring system inside the cab. So you're more than welcome to get your information off of that. Looks like we got another question here. The sidewall damage, how do you decide when it needs replacing? So sidewall damage, that's a big topic. Um, so usually I believe it's a quarter inch deep or if there's tread showing. Uh, again, everything is a case by case scenario. So by all means, um, I would encourage you, Robert, to go ahead and take a picture of that tire and then shoot that on into Road Assist so we can help you guys make a decision on uh, if that tire is okay to run or if we need to replace it. Um, another thing with tires, I would highly, highly encourage you guys, if you do have tires that need to be replaced, let's try and get to a terminal. Uh, manufacturers state that each tread, uh, 30 second of tread depth is worth about 10,000 miles. So with that being said, that gives us a lot of time to try and work back to a terminal. Not only are we gonna have the best casing credits for you with our uh, uh, tire manuf or retread facility, we're also gonna be able to give you a better labor rate, uh, cheaper tires, we get them in-house, we get them a lot better deal since we buy them in bulk here versus over the road. So I would really encourage you, you can save hundreds if not thousands on a set of tires just by doing them at the terminal. Jay Johnson asks if we have a brake check video. Uh, yes, I believe there is a brake check video on the um, YouTube page or maybe on the Prime app. You have to filter through some of those, but there is a video showing you how to inspect brakes. Um, there are several prompts. Oh, okay. Don't hit it right. Okay. Well, yeah, that's, um, I'm, I guess we need to look into that. That's a very expensive piece of equipment. We definitely want to get that working. So I know that thing's been a hot topic for a lot of years. So Right. Would you recommend a mid-trip inspection from TA Petro? Absolutely. Any of your um, tire care through Loves or mid-trip inspections through TA, I know right now they're offering some free inspections. So by all means, utilize those guys. I mean, that's that's free labor you're getting done on your truck. Also with that, you know, the road check coming up, any other items that are going to be inspected, they'll be able to catch those as well. How often should you rotate your tires? Um, the steer tires, I think they get rotated at 50 or at least they become multi-directional after 50,000. Um, again, that's going to be something you want to run through the terminal, let the inspectors look at. And if we need to do a rotate, by all means, we can get it knocked out while you're in the terminals. All right. Thank you guys for having me. If you have any questions, please comment below and we'll be sure and get back to you guys. I couldn't ever imagine finding a company that would be better for me. This is the perfect fit for me. Wow, I'm behind the wheel of a big rig. Like, look, the thing is big. <laughs> I can't believe it that I'm actually driving a semi. I'm so excited. I felt empowered that I can do what a man does as a sole provider for my three sons. So here I am, driving for Prime. I'm very passionate about Prime. I'm a primer for life. I am a primer for life. Highway diamond all the way. Up here, uh, giving us that information and the questions. Uh, Sean just told me from payroll last week, we paid out $7,500 in clean inspections. So we know a lot of you are doing a good job out there inspecting your equipment. Most of the violations that are found on equipment, in my opinion, can be detected by simply walking around the equipment, whether it's lights, looking at your tires, whatever it is, they're pretty easy to detect. I just want to comment on a couple of things real quick before Brianne comes up. Uh, next week, we will have someone in here to talk about the tire reader here in Springfield. Uh, as Tyler said, that is an expensive piece of equipment. We expect it to work. If there are troubles with it, we need to identify what those are. So be ready for that next week. Uh, we're confident in that technology, but I did see several comments where people say that it's not working. So that'll be a topic for next week. Another topic for next week, I'll ask Stan Caster key to come because I saw a comment roll through that some trainers maybe shouldn't be training. And I 
Now, on the surface, I can't disagree with that. Maybe we do look at who we qualify to be a trainer very closely. It's a stressful position, taking someone from basically no tractor trailer experience to the point where they get their CDL and then on to the point where they can be a solo driver. But we need to know if there's issues out there. So next week, I will and stand to talk about what is the appropriate action to take if you feel a trainer or an instructor is not acting uh, appropriate out there. Uh, it does no good for us to just gloss over that and not talk about it. So that'll be one of our topics next week. If you've ever been to one of our safety meetings, you know one of the things that I always just talk about and I love to introduce is when Brianne is here, is the app. What a game changer this is. Uh, we thought cell phones were neat. It kind of got you away from the pay phones, but boy, that app became basically your Qualcomm in your pocket. It can do everything for you. So without me talking anymore, Brianne, come on up. So get those questions ready on the app and those suggestions. You always have a lot of good ones. Brianne? Good morning. I'm Brianne from the IT department. <laughs> and I have to stand closer. Um, I just wanted to mention a few new things that we have um, that we've rolled out in the app over the last couple of weeks. Um, the first one would be the Ask Dab section. Um, our driver advisory board is one of my favorite things to go to. Our drivers always bring a lot of really good suggestions and topics and, and sometimes they're hard and sometimes they're just things that would be really beneficial that we don't understand. So um, they asked us for a place to uh, be, for our drivers to be able to submit questions to them. So inside of my prime, you'll see an ask dab section now. Um, while you're in there, you can submit a question. Um, our drivers are on the road. Um, these are our active driver advisory board members, so you might not get a response immediately, um, but they do try to answer all of them. Uh, it's really for questions you have that you would like a driver's perspective on. Uh, if you'd like to know from an experienced driver uh, how they should do things or, or different things that you come across on the road and see um, situations that might need to be addressed in the next uh, driver advisory board meeting, uh, things that you'd like to see brought to management's attention. Um, so they don't do policy and procedure questions. Those are still for your fleet manager, but they'll try to answer your questions, point you in the right direction if you need somebody else to talk to. Uh, so you can submit those questions. You can also search the questions and see what else has been asked. If there's something that's already been asked along the lines that you're looking for, so you can get an immediate answer. But that Ask Dab feature is very new um, and something we're kind of giving a shot. So uh, you'll see that in My Prime. Also, a couple of weeks ago, we rolled out in the My Fleet section, uh, by request from our driver advisory board was to add the net fuel. Um, so we did, we added that information out there and we also added in all of the rankings that go with that. So if you maybe have multiple trucks or maybe you have uh, your co-driver driving for a little while while you're off the truck, you can still go in there and see your net fuel and everything that goes with that truck. All right, we have a question from Anthony. Can you change Jill's voice? <laughs> I cannot change Jill's voice. Jill is Jill. Uh, she is who she is. I'm sorry. A couple of questions for dark mode. Dark mode is in the uh, in the forecast. So we'd love to see that happen. There's just a lot that has to happen with it, but it is on the radar. Uh, can we send adjustments when we find out road is not updated or customers have changed? Uh, yes, there is a macro out there for that. So if you have, it's a correction to directions. I couldn't tell you the macro number if I needed to, but there is one out there. There you go. Anthony says macro 28. Um, yeah, it's out there on the app. You can just type those directions. It goes straight to the people who need to get on there and get it done. Will we ever see the trip sheet on the app? Yes, yes, you will. Uh, that's actually one thing we're working with payroll with right now. Um, there's a, a lot of things that happen with that trip sheet. Uh, so we are working on making that an electronic version that's going to kind of help everybody and still let us get everybody paid. That's the most important part. Can you add weekly fuel mileage to the My Fleet tab so I can track my driver's fuel mileage? Uh, so we don't have the miles per gallon on uh, anywhere in My Prime quite yet, um, but that is one thing that we're looking at. And when we do it, we will add it to My Fleet because a lot of people really like that My Fleet page. So, yes. When we get it on the other part, we'll get it there. Can you add live dispatch to help fleet manage your time on phone? Uh, no. Um, unfortunately, live dispatch really means you got to talk to a live person. Um, so that's not something that we can do through the app right now. They really want you to call in so they can make sure all those things are correct on side, inside that load and all the settings are correct so we don't have claims and issues like that. So unfortunately, that one we can't do.
this is an interesting one. Uh, please add fleet manager mugshots, but photos of who the people are in the app. Um, we can take a look at that. Yeah, we've never done that before, but um, I'm sure we can. Where there's a will, there's a way. Okay. Keep going. Sorry. No, that's I. And um, we'll repeat the question. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Steve has the mic. Um, my macro 57 on app. I think they were talking about earlier. Um, I don't know which one macro 57 is. If you give me a, a name, I can tell you if it's on there or not. <laughs> Um, option to control reefer unit from app. Um, uh, you're asking about an option to control the reefer unit from the app. Um, we are working on some alerts, but we don't have a control mechanism for it. Um, but we will add it to the suggestion box. Ray has a suggestion. Can you see if your fleet manager is clocked in or off site? We're working on that. Uh, we hope that it's going to be helpful as um, kind of the back to the office plan. And some people are are still remote, and some people will be on site. And we're we're working on we're kind of trying some stuff out, um, just trying to figure out what's the best way to get the information out there. We just want to make sure that everybody knows that even if it says that your person may be here or not be here, there's always somebody who can help you here. So if you if your logs person might be showing off site or away. Um, there's always somebody else who can help you. Uh, and just because your particular person might not be here doesn't mean that you're not going to call that number and get somebody. So just keep that in mind. On the trip sheets, will the numbers entered be automatically entered for more accuracy on operation statements? Um, I cannot confirm nor deny what's going to happen on the trip sheets because we haven't made it all the way through that process yet. But um, I will let you know that it, it will be electronic. Um, so we're we're working on the process. Jay Johnson said, how is the weekly miles per gallon calculated? Well, that's a good question. Um, I don't know the answer off the top of my head for that. So I'll have to, I'll have to circle back around and provide you some actual information because I don't know off the top of my head. So I will come back and answer your question. Um, Jonathan asked if there's a way to pinpoint trailers to the app like we can with our trucks so we can find it at customers. So we've had that suggestion a lot about the trailers. Um, we, we haven't found a great way to do that quite yet um, because we don't know, I mean, we do know if they're loaded or empty, but trying to find and make sure that you can only see the trailers that would be appropriate and not being able to find ones under different circumstances and things like that. So we've had that suggestion from both in-house and from our drivers and, and we're looking at it. We just don't have a great way that we figured out how to make it work the way we want it to inside the app. So um, definitely on the radar, but don't have a great solution for that one quite yet. Okay. Do you have any other updates? Sorry. I do not have any other updates. There's a lot of stuff still coming, but I don't want to talk about it till it's really time. So um, we did release Prime Mobile 3.13 a couple of months, a month-ish ago, give or take. Um, so 3.13 on Android, 3.13.1 on Apple. Um, if you don't have the latest version, I would recommend getting it. A lot of uh, fixes kind of went into there. Um, so we have a lot of uh, a lot of new things coming and they'll require that newer version. So please make sure you, you check that version under, under settings. Um, if people have feedback on the app, where do they provide that? Or on the app? On the app. So if you send a message to Prime Mobile Help, uh, we answer every single one of those messages that are sent to us. We investigate. We have, uh, if there's suggestions, we have a file where we put all our suggestions. And when it's time for the next thing, we pick the ones that have the most uh, requests for, and we try to get those done as quickly as we possibly can. Great. Anything else? That's all that I have. If you have more questions, feel free to drop them in there, and we'll get back and answer them.
standing up here taking those questions, but the questions were great. And there's one thing I do just want to mention. I think everyone's aware of it. You know, a little suggestion on one item. Remember, that can be literally months of programming work. We take every question seriously, every suggestion we get, but it's simply not possible. Okay, we're going to do that right now. They put a lot of work into it. We have vendors that help us with this. We continue to send us your suggestions on the app. When this app first came out, it in no way compares to what it is now. And a lot of the changes have truly come, in from, come from suggestions from our operators. So keep those coming. I know Brianne and her team work very hard to, to implement as many changes as quickly as possible. So again, thanks to Brianne and thanks for all those questions. One neat thing that I like about the app is it allows you to get paid accurately without going back and forth with having to send in documents because you can send them right in on the app. As soon as you leave the uh, as soon as you leave the shipper, and a big part of that we owe to our payroll department to make that work. So our next two speakers are Sean and Angie from payroll. So get your payroll questions ready, and I will ask them to come on up now. Good morning. I'm Sean Riker. Of course, go ahead. I'm Angie, <laughs> uh, and we're from payroll. So I uh, appreciate Steve giving us a chance to come in here and talk to you guys. And we want to talk about a couple of things that you know, we get a lot of questions on things. We've got some new things, too, that we want to make sure you guys know about. So one of the first things normally at the end of April <clears throat> would not be a timely item for us, but um, taxes. So we've got an extension on it. So we still get a lot of calls about people wanting their 1099s and their W-2s. So thanks to Brian, a couple of years ago, we actually are able to get that on our app. So you can get it. It's under uh, My Prime and Tax Documents. And from there, you can either view it if you just want to see it. <clears throat> you also have the option to email it to whatever email address you want to. So some people will email it to themselves. Some people need to send it to their accountant, whatever. Both of those options are on there for you guys. Um, you can also pull up historical ones on there. Um, all of them that you have, and it pulls up any 1099s and W-2s that you guys would have on there. Um, <clears throat> another item that I want to talk to you guys about, and it's been a couple of years that, that we've been into this now, and that's the on-road card. So it's been right at two years. So April of 19, we started this and everyone's transferred over now from our legacy card to our new on-road card. But as we go through this, there's a few things that, that people need to make sure they, they realize. And one of those, uh, we still have drivers that use the Fleet Advance app. And that's the one we use with the old card. The, you have to download the on-road card app in order for it to work correctly with your on-road card. Makes sense, it's available in, in your, um, App Store, um, uh, wherever you guys get those at. So make sure you download the OnRoad app. If you haven't and you're going to do it right now, um, make sure whenever you do that, the employee number that they ask you for in there is going to be your social whenever you sign up for it. So yeah, a question, uh, why can't they have two accounts from the same bank? Uh, that's been that way for a long time. And do you know the answer offhand? I believe it's something in accordance to their same routing number, our system doesn't identify them as separate accounts. So, I mean, that is something that I feel like we, we can definitely look into. Um, maybe it can be an option further down the line because it, it would be easier for a lot of folks to have them separated and go to two separate accounts versus one. So that is something that we will look into. One workaround that our drivers do right now is they get it onto their card and then in the on-road app, you can set up um, transfer to a bank and they'll get money, some money put on their card and some money put into the, uh, the bank account. And then they can transfer it from their card into the other bank account whenever they want to. Uh, William asks, can I pay driver's bonuses through payroll? So you can't through payroll in particular, but now one of the things I talked to you guys about in the on-road app or the uh, on-road card is now you can do peer-to-peer -peer transfers. So you can right now send money, just peer-to-peer -peer transfer to um, any of your students or, or anybody else, you know, you buy a fridge from somebody, anything else. And that came live uh, a couple of months ago or so. So we can't do it through the payroll side, but you can easily do it card to card transfers now. Charles is still, <clears throat> he says that he's having issues with the Honor card itself. Maybe we'll reach out to you after the meeting and to find out what the issue is with the car so we can get that figured out. Yeah, there hasn't been any issues that we haven't been able to fix. Now, some of them are quirky things here and there, but generally it works out fairly well. Uh, we do have a dedicated rep now um, from Calm Data that will eventually be on site here. Um, her name's Tara. She's she's really good. She really digs into whatever needs to happen. So I'm sure we can get it fixed, Charles. We'll, we'll reach out to you on that. 
Epic Square said, can trip documents be scanned as a single PDF instead of multiple JPEG files? No, no, they can't right now. Um, and I don't know they will be able to in the future even. Um, whenever we get them in, there, there's some stipulations on how we need to index them and do things with. So I don't know if that's going to be in the future. I know it would be easy, though, so we get that availability down the road. We'll definitely keep it in mind. Carry on, sorry. Um, the other thing about the on-road app I wanted to, to, or the on-road card is I want to mention to you guys is I want to make sure that everyone signs up for fraud alerts. And that works the same way as any card you guys have. You actually text in, just the word I-N, to 57911, and it will allow you to opt in. So if the card activity thinks there's some fraud on there or anything suspicious, it will send you a text message that says, hey, Sean, is this really yours? Do you confirm or deny? And, and it stops a lot of that fraud that happens on, on any cards. You said 57911. 57911. <clears throat> um, the other thing, one kind of as we're talking about ComData a little bit on here, um, whenever there's a check, any issues with a check, um, a com check, you used to have to wait 30 days in order to get the uh, get it rectified. Now that actually is cut down to 21 days. Um, I, I and everyone else would like to see it at zero, of course, but um, 21 from 30 is a pretty good improvement on it. So I want to let everybody know that. We've been handling that on our side for a while. Nothing required from you, just kind of a heads up for it. Um, James said, I've already had my card information stolen once. Some of our locals are find our entire card number. Can we find an alternative to this? So that's actually my very last item, but I will tell you guys, I'm testing two different systems right now um, for lumpers. Um, so uh, I think we're going to see some movement on that in the fairly near future. Um, just streamline the whole process, actually. Um, they both have some pretty good options. So um, I, I hear you. I, I, I agree it's an issue, but I think we will have a solution sooner or later. Um, for the... Uh, when they use it online for the card, can it show up as a credit card instead of a debit card? It restricts the use for payments? <clears throat> no, because it, it runs on a debit rail. So it will always run that way. Jerry Cheek said, is the on road card and Com Data card a separate card? No, no, they're the same thing. So it's the same, same badge you guys have right now. It, it all does the same thing. The same as the legacy card did before. The only real difference is now you can use anywhere MasterCard's accepted. Sergio said, what benefits are there to use ComData instead of our credit cards for fuel? Well, it runs through automatically. Um, on our side, you get the discount whenever you run and you fuel with the card. Um, I will tell you, if you're looking for benefits, um, you know, your credit card, you can get some cash back on, but it ends up being a huge cumbersome process for that. Um, you got to get cash POs for it. Um, it runs through differently. Um, no discounts, like I said. Um, but if you're looking for benefits, one thing I would mention to you guys, and Sam's probably mentioned this a hundred times already, but if you register your card or, or with like loves or different ones, there's certain benefits you get by registering or feeling through their app instead of actually swiping at the uh, point of sale there at the uh, pump also. Chad said he's had several <clears throat> issues with the on-road on -road app getting it to work, so he gave up. What do they, who should they call if they're having issues? So I will tell you guys, in our app, um, IT has done a great job. There's a whole section on there. That, that says, um, I don't remember exactly where it is on here, but um, I think it's under my prime and then the little drop down menu. Um, I think it says come down on road. There's actually a phone number on there that will get you guys directly to come data. And that will be your first stop every time, right? Cause they can handle almost all those issues that, that would happen on a general basis. Um, that number that's on there is different than the number that's on the back of your come data card. And that's because that's a number that's direct for prime. It lets them know it's prime that's calling in there and you skip a lot of the prompts. So you get to somebody a lot quicker. So I'd recommend you guys using that number every time. Now on top of that, um, you get to that person. If you can't get it resolved, um, give us a call uh, here. Give, give me a call if you want to. And I can get a hold of Tara to find out what's going on. You know, I, I see a couple of comments up here where people said, you know, they've given up. Don't give up. There's really not a problem that we haven't been able to solve. So I, I, I would recommend everyone, you know, give me a call. Um, give your payroll associate a call. They can get a hold of Tara also if they need to, if it's easier for you guys to get a hold of them because the My Contacts has their information. Adrian said, can we register a com check directly on app? So right now you can't. I would actually defer to IT if that would ever be an option. But um, my thought is the majority of the com checks you guys do are likely going to be for lumpers. If we solve the lumper problem, we may solve that problem along with it anyway. Go ahead. So our next topic is we recently added a new doc type. Whenever you're scanning in your trips, it's actually late fee. So when you have rescheduled fees, late fees, overtime fees, be sure and code those as a late fee versus a lumper. 
And the reason why we actually created a separate doc type for this is so we can identify those fees better on our side and we can bill the customer accordingly. Um, if you have any questions or have any issues with it, please let us know and, and we can help out. So. Another item that, that I want to talk about, and actually it looks like Ray's got a, a piece of that, and I need to reach out to Ray independently about his going to all of his charts instead of one, but it has to do with his emergency fund. So emergency fund, courtesy of, of IT, um, is a lot easier to use now. And that was happened a few months ago. <clears throat> you used to have to come in, fill out a piece of paper, and, and, and get whatever you guys want to do for your election to it. But now you can actually do it all through the app. So it's under My Prime and My Progress. It'll show you what your current balance is. Um, now, I do want to tell you guys that current balance, and it says it on there, is as of last time payroll ran. So it doesn't update real time. So if you had $1,000 in there and you pulled out 500, it will still show $1,000 in there until payroll runs again and that number updates. So you kind of know in your mind what you've asked for and what you haven't. And we obviously check that on our side before we, we distribute anything. But from there, you can request, you can go to manage my e-fund. It gives you an option to um, request a distribution to your card, which is the majority of them, or to settlements if you want to. It asks you what settlement date you want to send to. Um, it also gives you an option to enroll if you haven't already. And if you're an independent contractor and you don't have an emergency fund, I would tell you guys, just, just put something in there, start it. It's really a handy op option for you guys to have. Um, you can do it on a cents per mile, a percentage of, of revenue, or you can do a flat rate. And, and flat rate's probably the, the more normal that people do, but whatever works for you. Um, if you're gonna be at home one week and you wanna turn it off, you can send a message in there to turn it off and then you have to go back in and turn it back on. Um, but you can manage it on your side much easier now through the app, which is a great thing for you guys. Now, I will tell you, when you do all of that, it still sends a manual message to payroll and we manually have to, to do those changes. So if you do it at midnight, obviously the next day is when it's gonna happen on there when we're actually in the office. Um, she clarified, she said that there are some vendors that only show the cards as credit and won't accept it as a debit card. So they're looking for attaching some type of account and routing and working. That is interesting. I will reach out to you individually. I've not had that scenario through my testing. I'm not saying it's not out there, but I need to look into it for answer. So call me your truck number eight, because that's not really <laughs> evil win. <laughs> You're probably right. Yes. <laughs> or, or call your payroll associate and get with me afterward. Whatever way is easy for you to get a hold of us, um, but I do need to know some information about it. Um, well, I did have a couple of other items real quick. Um, <clears throat> one of them is going to be, we get a lot of questions on the company side. They will call and say, hey, I've been here a year. Um, when's my pay raise or when's my vacation? And it's not actually done by time. It's done by miles, by, by payroll miles. So <clears throat> um, we're looking at the option to get the, the information out there to you guys to let you know at what rates um, pay are, um, when they increase, you know, certain mileage bands, things like that. Um, and to let you guys know where you're at right now based on uh, how many miles you have for vacation or how close are your next pay raise. So not only when they are, but where you are in relation to each one of those things. Um, and depending on if you're reefer, flatbed or tanker depends on, on what your pay rates are. So it's division specific and on vacation it's division specific too. even within reefer it's division specific as to whether you're a regional or an over the road. So there's a lot of stipulation to it. And that's why it's not out there yet. It's just kind of hard to get, get maneuvered correctly. <clears throat> and um, you can tell about scanning trips. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> trick question. <Sorry. laughs> um, part of the requirements for you to be eligible for bonuses, whether it be team bonus, safety and service bonus, fuel bonus, is you have to scan your trips in within 48 hours. So when you do receive those messages on the Qualcomm, you have five hours to scan, 12 hours to scan, please be sure that you pay attention to those and you get your trips and scan timely. Ideally, we would like for you to scan your trip immediately after you empty. So that way, all your documents are together, all your receipts are together, so you can scan them in at one time so nothing is lost. So it is a good reminder to be sure you scan in your trips as you go and also so you can get paid any bonuses that you're eligible for. And that's a big thing. Um, <clears throat> we have people every week that, that wait until the last minute also. 25% of our trips come in on, on cutoff day. And whenever that happens, a lot of them are in the afternoon, of course, last minute. When that happens, it makes me believe a few things. Number one, 
you're likely not within that 48 hours. So you've missed your opportunity for bonuses. But on top of that, if something's wrong, say we can't read it, it doesn't come through, you forget a document, um, you, you misindex it under a wrong um, trip or something like that. We don't have an opportunity to get with you before the cutoff is to get it rectified. So it's really in your best interest to get it to us as soon as you can. And it's been a while back, maybe two years ago or so, we actually change when you get those messages, those reminder messages. It used to be a set time um, that you would get them. Now you get them as soon as you empty. <clears throat> you get it the next time that you stop after eight hours. Um, and then you get it the next time you stop after, I don't remember what the number of hours is after that. But it was strategic to where you get those messages when you're stopped and you can scan for them. So it used to be just set a certain amount of time and you may have been on the road. So didn't think that was real fair to you guys. So when you get those messages, it really is a reminder to help you guys get what you need. Okay, a couple more questions. Um, Sergio said, I got detained by the customer for three days and the load ended up getting canceled. How is the tension calculated and how soon do we get paid? Uh, unfortunately, that's really not our gig. Um, <clears throat> I, I hate to tell you that, but your fleet manager is probably going to be the one who knows the most about that side of it and your situation independently on it. So I'm going to defer to them to, to go with your situation. Sergio had another question above there. I don't remember exactly what it was, but I wanted to address it. The cards don't work yet. <clears throat> yes, personal side. Um, so I'm actually in works right now with Loves, and they are trying to find a way where if you swipe, Currently, what would happen if it's a, a company item and you swipe it and it's not allowed on for Prime to pay for it, you just can't pay for it at all. Or if you have a mixed transaction where you have DEF and a candy bar, um, it, will, it will right now it will fail that transaction. That's because it one, runs on Comdata single rail and, and they believe that's going to be a company transaction because there's one company item on there. So Loves is actually uh, working on a solution. I looked at it last week um, and we're gonna start testing it soon um, to where you could split those apart. It would come back with a prompt, something similar to saying, hey, you know, both of these would run on the personal side if you want them to, which in this scenario, if you're buying DEF and a candy bar, you don't really want them both on the personal side, but you can break it apart and you can run one company one and then one personal one. Um, or if it is something that you just want to pay for, then, then you can, of course, on your own together at that same time. So it, it's kind of a, a workaround. Uh, Comdata system was built 30-ish you know, years ago uh, on what items are. And 30 years ago, they didn't think they would have a MasterCard built into you know, a, an ID card that works here and everything it does. So there's some catching up to do on that side of it, but there are some workarounds that are in, in essence. And I appreciate you bringing that up. I had a couple questions about uh, lease drivers and what's the incentive for skating trips? Do they earn bonuses? So it depends on on what type of bonus you're talking about. We've done some things in the past where if you scan within a certain amount of time, you get in a drawing for, for little prizes. Um, now, if we're talking about the incentives that we say, hey, you have to scan within 48 hours, I'm just going to be your safety and service, your fuel bonus, things like that, um, that, that you would earn normally. Um, it does require you to scan within 48 hours. Now, I'll follow up on that 48 hours also because that's what we require. We want to give you a reasonable amount of time to get it. But we do have some customers, and it seems to be a growing trend where in order to get credit for that lumper, they may have to have it submitted to them within 24 hours um, or whatever number they come up with. So uh, it's really important for you guys to, to scan that as soon as you can. Um, it doesn't do a whole lot of good to save it until the end because if you're out of that 24-hour window, but you're still within our 48 hour window, I can't get you a, the reimbursement for that lump or if, if you don't get it in time for us for their, their demands, not ours. Joshua Brown said half the time I try to get extras like washer fluid or coolant when I fuel, it gets denied saying it's not authorized. Yes, and that would be part of the solution that I was talking about just a little bit ago. I, I recognize that and you are correct. Right, well, last <clears> question. Uh, Jay Johnson, why does Walmart not allow us to run Comdata debit anymore? So Walmart has a maestro system is what their theirs is based on. And you used to be able to go in there and you could run it and you could get cash back there also. It was kind of a workaround because you couldn't use your card hardly anywhere. So we did give up that, that functionality whenever we moved to this card, but we did gain the functionality of you can, instead of having to get cash back at Walmart to go to Wendy's to eat, you can just swipe your card at Wendy's now. So it was a trade-off for that and it won't work there. It's a whole different system unless Walmart changes from Maestro to a different system. Okay. We've got some more questions, but we'll go through and respond to them. Okay. Out of time. Anything else you want to I don't think so. Thank you guys.
Thanks, Sean and Angie, for coming up. Those questions came in rapid fire. I think they did a great job. Let me let me repeat one thing that Sean said. Don't give up. I, I think that's great advice. This stuff is complicated. And I'll be the first to admit, maybe I was a little slow to start embracing some of this technology myself. Do what I did. Ask for some help. You've got your payroll advisor. You've got the IT help desk. You've got your fellow drivers. You've got your fleet managers. There's a lot of people that will help you. We want you to succeed out there. And I know everything's being thrown at me. I can't do all of this. Well, you just take a deep breath. Just take one task at a time and, and you will get there. I, I can just about promise you that. <clears throat> a lot of good questions there. As uh, Andrea said, we can't get to them all, but we will go through and review them and try to respond back uh, to as many questions as we can. There was one question up there about the million mile dinner and the Christmas party. When are we going to get back to that? That's kind of kind of lead to our next speaker, Jason Seymour. Trust me, we are looking at that. No one wants to get back to those functions more than Robert Lowe, our founder and president. But we have to be prudent about this. We have to realize what you've all been through the past year. And we don't want to be premature and say, declare victory on COVID when maybe we're not quite there. We've made tremendous strides. You guys have done a fantastic job out there, but we don't wanna have what sometimes is referred to as a super spreader event. Let's just say we have a million mile dinner and there's a couple people, they don't even know it, but they're infected and that can just spread. It can spread to your family and we're just gonna be cautious about that. So I'm gonna ask Jason to come up, kind of update us where we are on COVID, what the future looks like. And I'm also gonna ask Jason to talk about operations just for a minute. We don't have uh, Robert and Steve today. They're both out of town. Uh, so I'll ask Jason to kind of give an operational update on freight and then I'll come back up and close us out here at the end. So hang in there and uh, Jason, it's all yours, sir. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I know, I was trying to find the right spot here. So there you go. yeah. Good morning, everyone. What do you guys want to talk about? Oh, COVID, right? <laughs> all right. So what a year. Um, that's really about all I can say. It's been a crazy year. Uh, I'll start by saying really appreciate everything that that uh, you have done uh, for us. Uh, as, as a, you know, the drivers out there have just been amazing. Working, uh, I mean, on a good day before COVID, it was pretty uh, crazy circumstances, some of the things, the amazing things that you do. Uh, but a couple of global pandemic on top of that really just shows the shows uh, how valuable you are. And it does not go unnoticed by me or anybody in the building uh, operationally, uh, really everybody that depends on this company to provide for their families. So um, I'll just give you a kind of a quick uh, synopsis of where we're at. Um, you know, I get asked a lot about numbers um, on the driver front. We've had uh, 324 drivers that have tested positive. Uh, we've probably done close to a thousand tests uh, between what we do in Springfield and out on the road. We do still test in Springfield Monday through Friday at the Plaza building and two days a week we test over at the campus in as well. So uh, if you're sick or symptomatic or you've been exposed to somebody that is uh, a confirmed positive, make sure you reach out to your fleet manager. That's still the, the, the communication uh, path is to reach out to your fleet manager first there's a health form that we fill out that'll go to myself and uh, Clay and Brooke, um, as well as the, the folks at Trinity, the providers at Trinity. It'll kind of allow us to do a little bit of a initial screening to see what's going on and then make a recommendation on maybe what we need to do. Um, you know, sometimes it's just kind of monitor the symptoms. Sometimes it's get tested right where you're at. Sometimes it's, man, you need to get home. Sometimes it's in Springfield, depending on uh, again, depending on those circumstances. So we do still have uh, quarantine and isolation facilities over at the campus. And I can't speak uh, highly enough of the, of the the job that those folks have done, um, you know, as far as taking care of our drivers that have been sick. Do you have a question. What's Prime's numbers looking like this this far regarding COVID? Uh, we've, on, the, on the driver's side, uh, we've had 324 positives. Uh, we have had four drivers that have, you know, unfortunately passed away. Very sad um, from it. Um, you know, again, I, I don't know the exact number, but we're close to up about a thousand tests or so probably as far as drivers go. On the in-house side, 
I'm not exactly sure Aaron Ellis does those, um, but I'd say we're probably, you, you know, we're probably 150 or so, maybe on as far as positive, uh, excuse me, positive on the uh, on the uh, in-house side. So, so all in all, I mean, again, you think what would what would those numbers have been had we not done anything? I mean, it. it I sit and think about it sometimes. I mean, you. you Something I thought about at the very beginning is, you, you know, and I talked to a guy yesterday, a 22-year driver, Bill Podesta, just chatted with him for a while, hadn't talked to him. And, you know, he's thankfully he's been safe, you know, but think of the number of shippers and receivers that you go to just in a normal week. Think of the areas that you go into. You know, you guys are in New York, you're in Chicago, you're in Atlanta, you're in, you know, all these, you know, hot spots that we have out there or that we had out there. And, uh, you know, so – when you think of the number of people that you're around just in the normal course of business, when you're interacting with people at shippers, receivers, truck stops to have, you know, 324 positive cases really, I think speaks to, you know, the, the vigilance that you've shown from the beginning of this and that you did take it serious and you did the things to protect you and your peers, the other drivers that you're around um, as well as the in-house folks and cannot tell you how much we appreciate it. We do still screen at all three of uh, our locations. Um, that's continuing on. Uh, our security folks uh, will check the temperature and, and ask a few basic screening questions. You know, what we're trying to do is, uh, uh, you know, screen out some folks that maybe have been exposed a little bit. You know, some of the, some of the triggers on that are any kind of fever. Um, you know, yeah, any kind of fever, any kind of respiratory deal that you may have going on. Um, these hot spots, I know that's a little bit of a subject for, for conversation, but, you know, when you get in and around some of these, uh, you know, major metropolitan areas where there's a high density of people and they're still, even though cases may be down in some cases, you know, they're not in all of them. I mean, I was looking at some of them this morning and they're still, you know, case counts over the last seven days are up in several of these uh, places that we're screening for. They're down in some, they're up in others. Uh, there's still a high density of people. And, uh, you know, anytime you have high density of people and high levels of community transmission, then there is an increased risk that you inadvertently picked it up. It, it has, uh, you know, on the driver's side, probably two weeks ago, we were at 308 positives. And so in the last two weeks, we've gone from 308 to 324. So that's 16 in the last two weeks. And, and that's that's higher than what it was for, for probably the six weeks before that. So so again, what Steve says is is really rings true is man, we're close. <laughs> you know, one thing, one thing we can all agree on is, you know, nobody, we're all tired of wearing these masks, we're all tired of doing the screenings, we're all we're all worn out with this stuff, but and we want to get back to normal. But we've got, got to be cautious. We can't. Um, it's encouraging to see what's happening in some of the states like Texas and Florida that have just done away with their state mask mandates. And, and you know, so I think we're, we're definitely going the right direction. Vaccinations are up, um, which is great. And for any of those that, uh, for any of those that uh, you know, want to get the vaccine, I mean, there is still vaccine available at Prime. Um, or if you can't make it here, you know, uh, it's just type in, uh, you know, Illinois COVID vaccine, for example, and it will put, take you right to a website where you can uh, find out where it's available, when it's available, all those different kind of things. If you're at a point, you know, that uh, you want it, but you haven't had an opportunity to get it yet. Was there a question? Um, yes. Uh, Johnson's logic. He said, Jason, why are team trucks from dispatch being forced to on solo loads set for 56 hours on loads of past seven days? Um, well, I mean, the first, the, the first thing that jumps out to me in that question would be, I don't know that we're forced to do anything. I, that's really a tough question to ask, but I, I'll tell you, um, send me, uh, here's my cell phone number. It's 417-830-6240. Shoot me a text. I get terrible cell service in the building, but if you'll shoot me a text with your truck number or your phone number, I'll call you back and we'll look at that specific load. Um, you know, as far as the operational side, I can tell you that uh, our productivity is up. Are we perfect? Absolutely not. Are our customers perfect? Absolutely not. Um, any team that sits on a load for 56 hours is a travesty. 
you know, that's a lot of missed productivity. Um, there's probably, there's gotta be a reason for it. I, I would really need to look at the specifics of where we were at, what our options were, um, and, and to be able to truthfully, you know, and, and correctly answer that question. Can you read, uh, it's, yeah, can it's you 417-830-6240. Okay. And then we have a question. Um, what is your beard care routine? <laughs> I gotta get mine like yours. <laughs> <laughs> I did straighten it this morning for my birthday. You know, my wife got me, a, my kids and wife and kids got me a what? beard straightener, you know? <laughs> no. Yeah. I don't. Um, we have another question here from JP Wick. He said, when will we get the load board, load, load, what's it called? Selection? <laughs> Therein lies the problem. Yeah. The short answer is never because it's not a load board. All right. And, and I know that's kind of a smart answer, but we really got to, be careful about what this is and what it's designed to do because that's, you know, operationally, I'll tell you, Robert's made it very clear, you know, that our drivers want this and we are going to find a way to uh, fold it into our operations. We will. It's taken us a while. We've had some kind of crazy circumstances that have delayed it. Um, but, uh, you know, as far as the load choice, it's the load choice program. First, I mean, I want to be serious. It's not a load board. This is not a Landstar model, a, a brokerage model where we're, you go in and you just kind of see all the loads that are listed up on a load board and you, oh, I want that one, I want that one. Um, we don't do that. I don't, we're never going to do that. That's not what our, our network is. Um, you know, what the load choice program is, is behind the scenes, you know, there's a, a computer program that, that looks at uh, several different things and it looks at all the loads that are available and all the trucks that are available. And it optimizes, you know, every few minutes and it's every, any, any, any time you can look at it and you can say, these are the, the three best loads for my truck or the five best loads for my truck. Now, what the load choice program does is all it, it really, it gives you visibility to what those are. Now, what we've had a, some challenges with is our freight network is so dynamic and so changing. We, we book freight 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. So to be able to, you know, ensure that drivers are getting the, you know, the best option, the most profitable option for their truck, which that's our deal. We want to give you the best, most profitable option for your truck. To be able to do that in that dynamic of a market has been a challenge. You know, the other thing that's happening right now is we are pretty much every day we're overbooked. We have more freight than we can cover. And in many cases, we're falling short on the commitments that we have made to some of our top customers, you know, the Walmarts, the Tysons, the General Mills, Kraft, you know, you go right on down the line. And really, you know, rationing might be a little bit too strong of a word, but the, the reality is, is that for what our customers, the freight that our customers need us to haul, there's just simply not enough trucks out there. And so that choice in many cases is going to be a little bit limited because we have to make decisions based on how we're going to provide the service that our customers expect from prime and so i know that's kind of a long-winded answer i know that's a hot topic i know drivers want it uh, we have probably 400 and some guys on it we haven't added anybody to it recently um but we we are you know we just had some strategic meetings last week it was a topic of conversation and, and it is we, we will get it figured out uh, why doesn't PTA update after docked at location 90 for load choice drivers? Um, I do not know the answer to that question, but I can find out. Okay. Uh, you'll like this one, which is, this is, this is not the first I like time I've heard this. that one that said, thanks, you did a great job when um, I was sick or something. No, you no, didn't read yeah. that one, did you? <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, you don't need any more praise. Uh, James <laughs> said, 85% of the time I get a better load for my dispatcher or sales than the load choice program. Well, and... <laughs> You know, that's one thing that I've always, when I talk to drivers about it, it's the same load, guys. I mean, it's a, and, and gals, it's the same load most of the time. Remember, this load choice program is giving you visibility to what the behind the scenes, the system is already running. These are the, the five best loads for your truck. Now, the, the best load for my truck might be the second best load for Andrea's truck, and it might be the third best load for Brienne's truck. It might be the fourth best load for Steve's truck. So as trucks get empty, that is constantly, constantly shuffling, okay? 
So again, all this is, is it's visibility. These are the three best loads that we have for you right now. And, and best is determined. Our definition of best is the most profitable, most productive load we can put on your truck. So, you know, it's really, most of the time it's the same load. If you look at what our planners and our planners for the, for the non-choice, non-load choice program trucks, our planners are using that same program. And if Steve's not on the load choice program, then what's happening is the, the planner for that area is going, oh, these are the three best loads for Steve. This is, okay, boom. And we pick the number one choice probably, I mean, a very, very high percentage of the time. I don't want to give the number because I'm not sure exactly what it is, but we, that's the load you're getting most of the time anyway. So, so again, you, you know, there, you're going to find folks that, you know, think I get better loads from my fleet manager. You're going to have folks who think, oh, I get better loads on the load choice program. And, and I can just tell you again from operationally, and, and it took me a long time to really figure this out. But the key to this is keep the wheels moving. The productivity is the key. The, all that rate per mile stuff, you know, it works itself out in the end. I, I've been here, it'll be 25 years in June, and I've never had a truck that went broke or went out of business because their rate per mile was too low. All right. They're, if they failed, if their business failed, it was because there was a lack of miles, lack of productivity. Their available percentage was out of whack. Their fuel cost was high. They had accidents that they were paying $1,000 and $1,500 deductibles or overweight tickets, uh, you know, numerous other things. But so, so people that really get, you know, focus that, that rate per mile, that is really, in my opinion, one of the last things that you should look at. You know, in fact, most people that I talk to that, that call and, and I'm not making enough money or something like that, they're, they're frustrated. Um, they don't even know what their rate per mile is. They can't tell you, you know, so why would we manage our business based on something that the people, you know, that you obviously aren't looking at it every day. You might look at it on an individual load by load basis. It's that revenue per day, revenue per week. It's the old Steve Larson. It's building a week. You know, we've got seven days, eight days, depending on what day you uh, deliver that last load. You know, that's, you got this bucket of money that you pay your truck payment, your fuel, and most importantly, pay yourself. And the key to doing that is, is to keep those wheels turning. Okay. It's the productivity, which is why that question for the 56 hours, I, I'm a team and I sat for 56 hours, you know, it really raises some red flags to me because that's the kind of thing that we cannot have. We have several comments about, um, I see a lot of solo loads for my team truck on load choice and that they don't think it's the best for teams. Well, and again, define solo load. All right. I guess define a solo load and define a team load. Um, you know, from an operational standpoint, again, the, the metric that we use is the revenue per day. All right. When I'm looking at a load, the, the, I look at the revenue per day. So if you have a, if you have a high value, let's just say you don't even have a high value load. Let's say you're in uh, Columbus, Ohio, and you have a load that picks up in Columbus, Ohio, and it goes to uh, Philadelphia. What's that? 500, 600 miles, something like that. It picks up on a Thursday and delivers on a Friday, and it pays $2,000 to the truck. Okay. Now, that's a load a solo could do, right? I mean, we're all in agreement that from a miles and distance standpoint, a solo could do that load. But when you look at that revenue per day, you know, there is a different metric that we look for with regard to teams. And so is that team going to have uh, additional time that they're maybe not driving? Well, yeah, they are because they've only got 600 miles to do or 500 miles to do or whatever it is in 24 hours. But when you look at the revenue that that load generates at $2,000 or whatever that number is, right, then, then that really, and, and plus where it puts you you know, with in regard to our freight market and what day of the week, there's a, there's a lot of things that go into it other than just, you know, the number of, you know, the miles that the trucks run and the, the revenue per mile, you know, but don't, don't I mean, we're, we're keenly aware that the productivity, you know, and that's a beautiful thing about drivers is really all you're telling us is, man, I want to work more, you know, and that's probably the biggest thing is, man, I had a really great week. If you look at our our miles per week are up, our revenue per week is up, earnings is up, earnings are up, sorry, uh, available percentage is down. So what that tells us is that people are getting more time off with their families, which is great. Um, they're making more money for their families, which is great. And the productivity while they're out there, 
is, is higher than what it was before. Which those are all good things. And probably still the number one uh, concern or complaint I get is I just I just want to work more. You know, I still have that wasted time. You know, that is that constant drive to 100 percent efficiency that we all have that, you know, yeah, I only use, you know, 65 percent of my available hours or whatever. Um, you know, well, how much money would I make if I could use 70 percent of my hours? Right. So. Okay, last question because we're running over an hour here. Um, Tim said, everyone's talking about how Prime is turning down 20,000 loads per week, but there still seems to be a lot of downtime between loads and lack of pre -plans. What is Ops doing to address this? Um, well, we're doing lots of stuff. I mean, there's a, you know, I think one thing that, that I, I think is, is probably the, one of the best things we do is we have a daily sales call where all of our sales coordinators along with Jim, uh, you know, and Pat, uh, you know, and Steve and Robert, um, and I listen in, um, and, and we get these sales calls, uh, to where each area goes through and, and really, uh, spells out what they're looking like, not only today, but for the next few days in the future. So that there's a lot more, I feel like a lot of collaboration between the coordinators so that we can drive that efficiency up again. Uh, you know, I don't know that we'll ever get to a hundred percent efficiency. It'd be not, it'd be wonderful if we could, but, Everything we do is uh, driven by the loads that our customers give us. And, you know, unfortunately, sometimes the loads that our customers give us or the loads that our customers need us to haul, they're not as efficient as what we would like them to be from a productivity standpoint. So again, we go back to the revenue per day and the revenue per week, um, you know, so again, that, that really is just telling me is I'm, I'm, I hope you're doing okay. I hope your earnings are where they need to be, but you're telling me, man, I just want to work more, which is which is going to help us all. And and believe me, we need it now because we are, it, it is a, a daily challenge for our sales folks and our operational folks to uh, meet the customer requirements uh, from a commitment standpoint. And and again, maintain that level of service that differentiates us from from all of our uh, competitors. Anything else? That's all you got? Well, they have more, but I don't want to kill you. You won't come back. It's okay. I give out your cell phone number, so it's cool. It's all good. Right. Now, thanks for everything you do. Um, I know, listen, I know it's tough, um, but it, but with every challenge comes an opportunity, and we have opportunities right now like you would not believe. If we're ever going to push the envelope on our customers right now, now is the time. Robert is on it every day uh, talking to our you know, sales folks, Steve's in a lot of these meetings and, and he is keenly aware that we are, if we're, we're going to apply pressure where it needs to be applied to squeak out more productivity, more efficiency, more earnings, more rate, all these things to keep pushing the agenda on your behalf. Um, cause you guys deserve it and we appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks Jason. You know, that's a lot of good information there. Honestly, and I don't say that because I work here. I don't think anyone does it better than Prime. You hear it a thousand times. Are we perfect? No, we're not. But our operational guys do know what they're doing. I saw a comment pop up, and we've talked about this in the past, a video to kind of show you what goes on behind the scenes. Maybe we can dust that off and get that video. There's a lot that goes in before that load is assigned to that driver. And with our one goal being making sure you're successful. It's been a good meeting, a ton of questions. A lot of our meetings are, are based on the questions that we get. And I've got four notes for next week. We may not get to them all, but next week we're gonna go ahead and talk about that tire reader, get you some more information on that. I think the trainer issue is a big one. We need to talk about getting information out on what to do if you don't feel the trainer trainee situation is as it should be. Want to talk about miles per gallon calculations. And I think next week, we've been promising this, we're going to get Sam Messick in and talk about our finalized fuel contract, what the benefits are for you, where it's going to be best to buy fuel and answer all your questions on that. So I do want to thank everyone that tuned in today. Those of you that are going to watch it later, thank you for watching it. I recommend you subscribe to our channels, click the bell icon so you get notifications and be sure to go ahead and like it if you do. Thank you. No, I'm not done. I'm not I done.
I gave it 7,500, okay. but I'm not done. Thank you, Andrea. <laughs> what we did not do, and it's entirely my fault, is we did not thank our veterans. We've always got a soft place in our heart for our veterans that have served our country, kept us free. So thank you for your service to our country. We appreciate every minute you gave to our defense. And we will see everyone next week. Thank you.